Hi everybody and welcome to Where You Live. As summer comes to an end and many of us head back into our fall routines, we wanted to help you start things off on the right foot. Throughout the show, we're going to be offering you fitness and nutrition advice to either maintain or kickstart that healthy lifestyle, starting with a tour of one of the Sioux's best kept secrets, the Outdoor Fitness Center. Check it out. We're at Clerk Park's Outdoor Fitness Center. Um, so we're in Clerk Park and we, the fitness center has been here since 2016, uh, just opened last summer. And it's all along the Hub Trail, so it's a great location in the uh, heart of the downtown. Anyone uh, over the ages of 12 years um, can come and use the park. They, if they are younger, they need to be accompanied by an adult. Um, anyone of any ability uh, can use the park as well. So we have a lot of workouts on our city website actually um, under the Outdoor Fitness Center that you can go on to and find out how you can use the fitness park whether you're in an assisted device or whether you're a beginner, senior, intermediate or an advanced um, exerciser. We have uh, different level bars so you can do anything from push-ups to pull-ups to um, if you need an assist, an assistive device can actually go in here and you can do some different exercises. Then we have a bench that's not just for sitting but is for any type of exercise whether you want to uh, do some triceps whether you want to use it as a step, step up. Um, and then we have different level step ups over here as well. And step down, a loose, yeah, and back down. Um, and then you get into um, the assisted step up. So if you need extra help for balance, you can hold on to the bars or you can go into uh, the tricep dip or the knee lift station. And then if you come over here, You'll see that you can do push-ups um, on here at different um, varieties of either close together or a little bit wider, or you can also do some tricep dips on here as well. Dropping your butt towards the ground, pressing back up. There's a stretching station over here, um, different pull-up uh, levels um, for different abilities, and then you have your a little bit more advanced pull-up station. There's a lot of varieties of pull-up, so you can have an assist uh, here, or you can bend your knees and have the person take both feet and then pull yourself up. So this is called a ring cage. Um, you can challenge your overhead strength by pulling yourself across um, the, the different handles. You, there's a lot of varieties of pull-ups um, and kids love over the age of 12 love to come and use the uh, pull-up bars. So if you come to the outdoor fitness park and you have um, some questions or are wondering, you can't remember what the exercises are at each of the stations, each station has a, a cue card on it that will tell you uh, what the station is for and how to use it. Uh, the, also the rules of the outdoor fitness center are um, at the front of the park and we have all this information on our website as well. So those are a few exercises you can try out at the fitness park on your way if you're on your bike on the hub trail or if you're walking by or if you're just coming to try some new things in your fitness re regime. Um, if you do have a fitness organization, a business that you have clients coming to, it's a great way to get your clients outside, to get your classes outside and try something new. Um, if you need more information on different exercises, you can go on the city's website or you can contact Active Sue and I can I'm glad to help you get your workout uh, outside. Thank you. We're hanging out here at the gym at Functionally Fit with Coach Jody Cowan. With bar parks and the hub trail and all these outdoor facilities, we really shouldn't have any excuses anymore, should we? Definitely not. We live <laughs> in a really great city that has given us tons of opportunity to be healthy and be fit. and. We're in the middle of the most beautiful nature. Beautiful area, for yeah. sure. So. so what do you think people, where, where do we start? What do we need to, what do we need to do? Um, when someone comes to me with a new goal, the first thing that I want to get them to do is really establish a clear why. 
a lot of times when when we start out on a new venture we just start going right away yeah. without really figuring out what the end is so really making sure that you know what your end result is right. and establishing what motivates you to do that is the first step for sure so walk walk the walk absolutely <laughs> the second part is really once you've established that why and and what it is that you're looking for is to really become the person, become the change that you want to see. And we've all heard that saying, become the change that you want to see in the world. Well, you need to become the change that you want to see in yourself. For sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we actually met up with a local author. She just hit number one on Amazon. She's written a book on just that, a book on leadership. Everyone is a leader in her mind. Check it out. My name is Andrea Rodmeyer and I'm a transformational coach and I'm here to talk to you about wellness today. So as a transformational coach, I look at the whole person. Not just the person who walks in the door uh, in an organization, because I do work with uh, senior leaders in organizations, but the whole person, who they were when they were at home too. So it's your mind, your body and your soul. It's all of you. We are not separate beings. We, don't, we are not separate from our organizations. We're all one. So who you are at home is not separate from who you are in your organization. So when a client goes through this transformation and really gets to know themselves and excel with their strengths, they also bring that back to their home life. And marriages, their relationship with their children, their friends, and mostly I think the key one here is themselves. They become best friends again with themselves. And that's really hard. We're, we're our worst enemies. I don't even talk to my friends the way I talk to myself sometimes, right? And that's the sabotage piece. I don't, I can't go to the gym, I'm an idiot. I can't do this, I can't do that. Who do I think I am, right? I would never talk to my friend like that. So. Through this, we talk to ourselves nicer, we have more compassion, we're more mindful, yes, and we love ourselves more. We're all shining lights, and we all have the potential, and we've been cultured, we've been told things, we believe things, and they're not true. It's all an illusion. When we actually see what's real, it's amazing the things that happen. It's miracles. They talk about miracles, but really they are, because it was there all along. We just don't believe. We put little sabotage, uh, the judger, you know, you can see, you know, a face, the teacher, or whatever you've got. You can't do this, right? So um, I love what I do because I bring it out because I can see what's going on. So I help my clients see that and, um, and they blossom. And you know what? This is a journey. We're on this planet to learn, and that's all it is. Lifelong learning. Learn to unlearn to remember. So one of the pieces uh, around coaching is the be, do, have. We're actually taught, if I have this car, then I will be happy. That's not how it works. And in wellness, if you, first you need to be, just you are amazing just the way you are. And you're like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. That's fine. That's one of the reasons you get a coach, by the way. <laughs> but I'm gonna give you a little tip right now. Just stand in your space with your two feet on the ground and say, I am, I am happy. I am worthy. I am love. That's the being. Just be, you already are. Then go and do the do. The doing is the action. Go do those pieces that are important. The healthy nutrition, the exercise, all of them are amazing. Lots of good hormones released when you do this stuff and you will have the happiness because when you do the nutrition properly, you 95% of serotonin is in your gut. And when we don't eat well, we inhibit that. When you exercise, you release oxytocin, known as the hug hormone, dopamine. 
serotonin, and testosterone. So you will feel better and then you will have the happiness and you will have the love because you've, it's actually circular, it's not linear, okay? So it's the bead first. Your mindset matters. What you think, how you set yourself up for success. You can do this because you are worthy. We're all love, we're all light. You deserve this. Go out and have fun. Hi everybody, my name is Jamie Brito and I am a holistic nutritionist. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making two different types of dairy-free yogurts. So the first one is going to be a coconut-based yogurt and the second one will be a cashew-based yogurt. We're going to ferment them and talk about the benefits of fermenting. The first thing we're going to be making today is coconut milk yogurt. I have with me here a can of full fat coconut yogurt and I just zipped it up in my blender just to make sure that it's smooth and creamy and what we're going to do is just take some probiotic capsules uh, you want to have about a 50 billion probiotic capsule or about that so a few other capsules of smaller doses into it we're going to open the capsules into the coconut milk mix it up we're going to cover it and let it sit to ferment for 24 to 36 hours we want to eat lots of fermented foods because they're incredibly full of beneficial bacteria. So this beneficial bacteria that's fermenting the foods is helping to break it down. So it'll be much easier for us to digest as well as the bacteria will go into our system and repopulate our guts. So it'll help with, first of all, our immune system, um, our detoxification methods, help to synthesize different nutrients, our mental health, as well as many other things. The other thing that we're going to be making today is cashew yogurt. You want to soak them for about four to eight hours. I usually do it overnight just to make sure that they're fully saturated. And this makes the cashews a lot easier to blend up. So we're going to be putting the cashews into the blender with as little water as possible. So you want to drain them from the soaking water and just slowly add water as the blender is on until you get a good smooth consistency. Uh, you can also use a food processor for this, whatever works best for you. Um, and you want it to be really thick and creamy. And this is where you're gonna see all the nice good fats that are in it. It's so important to make sure that you're consuming good whole fats, especially if you're wanting to feed this to your children. As soon as you have it all creamy, you're just gonna transfer it back into a clean bowl. Um, and then the cashews actually have their own yeast and bacteria already on them. So you don't need to add anything to this. It's literally just cashews and water. You're gonna cover it with your clean towel and let it set again for 24 to 48 hours. Okay, so this coconut yogurt has been sitting for about 48 hours now with my clean cloth covering it. To tell that it's done, it'll be much thicker than it was going in. Um, and it'll be lightly bubbly. So you can take your spoon and you can just start to mix it and it'll have much more of like a Greek yogurt sort of feel to it. And our cashew yogurt is finished here too. So this one is much easier to tell if it's done because it actually almost looks like bread that has risen. Um, and it has a sort of foamy texture to it. They're plain yogurts. They're not sweetened or anything. As you saw, we didn't add anything to them. So it will be quite tart. You can very easily just add some honey or maple syrup, um, use it in your granola, or use it as a savory dip. So put in some salt and pepper, maybe some fresh herbs, uh, chives or basil, and use it as a dipping sauce in that sort of way as well. Hi, it's Jody Cowan from Functionally Fit. We're gonna to talk today about some of the progressions that you can use when you're training your squat with your body weight. So when you're first starting out, I want you guys to start off on a box squat. You're gonna set up a box so that when you sit down to it, your hips are just below your knees, so you're just breaking parallel. Once you've accomplished that and you can get about five reps um, comfortably, then we can move on to the full squat. In the full squat, you're just gonna do the same movement, but all the way to the ground, making sure that the hips break parallel and you're keeping your torso upright, keeping the core engaged. So another fun variation for our squat is the Bulgarian split squat, which basically is just a lunge with your back foot up on a box. Same points of performance are happening here, so we wanna make sure that your front foot is grounded, that your torso is upright, 
and that you're staying controlled all the way down and all the way up to the top of movement. The Sturm Squat is a more advanced version of a one leg squat. As we go down, you want to really make sure that you're pushing into all four corners of the feet and then you're just going to touch your knee to the ground and then come back up. Really maintain that core strength all the way through the midline of the body and then come up to the top, hold it, try not to put that foot down and then repeat for as many reps as you can under control. So once you guys have mastered all of those, you can add in a little bit of variation with the Kazakh squat. This one is really fun, but it's very challenging. So really make sure that you're focusing on your balance and your midline. This is a lateral movement, so we're going to get a lot of stretching through the inside of the leg in this one. Um, have fun with it and practice one step at a time. So the squat is one of our core movements. You really want to make sure that you're nailing the form on each progression before you move on. This is about quality, not quantity. Happy squatting, guys. After the break, Jody will show you how you can master the dreaded push-up, no matter your fitness level, and find out how you can join a free running group that takes place at Bellevue Park. More to come. We're back in the gym with Coach Jody Cowan. We're talking a lot about motivation and mindset. No one sets out to say that they want to be unhealthy, so why do you think we struggle? Um, I think a big part of it is that a lot of people will set a goal that is probably about five or ten steps up the ladder, right. um, which is great to have as you know an end result, but you need to be able to celebrate those wins along the way. If you're starting out you know, just trying to drink more water, <laughs> then yeah. you can start, that can be your goal for the day. And right. then when you win and you succeed, you've got that extra motivation for the next one. So yeah. really, you know, breaking down your goals into steps and then making sure to celebrate those wins along the way, I think is really important. Right. And we probably need to really understand what motivates us as well, right? Like if it's that little win of the day or whether it's a week long goal. Yeah, we also, I think sometimes rely too much on motivation. Really motivation and inspiration are a result. They're not an instigator. Mm -hmm. When my alarm went off at 5.30 this morning, there was very little motivation to get up. <laughs> it's just, sure. you know, pick yourself up and do it. But after you've gotten that going, you feel great. You know, I was finally sitting down about eight o'clock. For my coffee, I felt yeah, felt good. Yeah, so. well, a goal a goal like a five k, that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it really depends on where you're at. Right. I mean, a five k, the distance is is not that unmanageable. So definitely, you can you can start out with that, and don't feel like you have to be the fastest right away. Mm -hmm. You know, make your goal to accomplish it, just to finish it, and then beat your own personal best. Right. You're the only person you need to compete with. Well, if getting out in a group is motivation, we caught up with a local group getting together every Saturday morning at Bellevue Park. Right, ready? Set, go! So the program's called Park Run. Um, I moved here in December with my wife. I thought it would be a good initiative to get people out and about, to uh, exercise more, to run, a walk, you can bring your dog, your family, uh, starts at 9am every Saturday morning. It's in, it's in Bellevue Park, just on the, by the river. That's where we start and we finish. It's a five, five kilometre uh, route around the, around the park and onto the island. You can walk it, you can run it, you can stroll it. It's entirely up to you. It is a timed run, which we'll record of the uh, times and positions every week, which are then downloaded onto the system we able to see and compare your results every week from week to week and just compete against yourself really it's not to compete against anybody else it's to compete against yourself and it's free that's the biggest thing as well it's all free register online at parkrun.ca and print you need to print a little barcode bring that with you every week and we'll scan that and you should be good to go so once you're on the website it's you just click on the uh, register park run of bellevue and you click on that it's free to register Input all your information. Once your barcode is printed, you will then bring it with you on a Saturday morning, uh, start at 9 a.m. And once you finish, like I said, we will uh, scan your barcode and you're good to go. Oh yeah, it's all over the world at the moment. It's big in South Africa, it's big in the UK, 
Uh, currently we have, if my memory is correct, we have 10 throughout Canada. Bellevue Park is one of the newer ones. They're building on at least three or four more by the end of the summer, hopefully to have 15 at least by the end of the summer, and they're really trying to build it throughout Canada. We come out on Saturdays and we all come for a run and it's a great way to be active with the family and the kids love it and they're getting faster every week and they enjoy it and it's a great way to get out on a Saturday morning. It's actually really casual. Um, this whole group is great. They're really easy to run with on Saturday mornings. Everybody's encouraging you at the end. Everybody's cheering you on and we all wait till the very end until everybody's done the whole thing and it's, it's just a lot of fun to be a part of a group. First of all, it costs nothing, which is excellent to be part of a program that's free and it's no one's the worst thing that happens is you walk like it's not gonna kill you <laughs> you can walk <laughs> no one's gonna say no <laughs> the city is blessed with a lot of high quality distance runners and and that community is strong but what the city is lacking is sort of a family oriented 5k people can come from the couch to 5k they can progress week over week and that's what this park run is is meant to support um, I've, I've been a runner for several years, so is Madeline. Um, I thought this initiative was interesting because it, got, it gave me the chance to run with my daughter. It's really fun. I don't really have much to say. You get to run with your friends, Yeah, I like right? to run with my friends. Yeah, and other friend. families we know. Yeah, I enjoy coming. I like seeing the water and when you go on the island too. It's really nice. It's a nice view. You run against yourself. You don't compete. If you want to compete with the best, you can. But otherwise, you run with your family, you run uh, Saturday over Saturday over Saturday, and you just try to improve. And, and it lets you um, track your, uh, your progress. And, uh, you know, Sault Ste. Marie, come on out and uh, enjoy the Park Run 5K. Saturday, every Saturday at 9 a.m. Check our Facebook page. Uh, it's just, just Bellevue Park Run. If you just uh, search that on uh, Facebook, it should come up. We, we create an event every uh, Saturday, so you can let, let us know if you're coming down, but it is there every Saturday morning. Yeah, we meet every Saturday morning at, after the run on Trunk Road at uh, Tim Hortons for coffee, to socialize, just to see how everybody enjoyed the run. Just want to say thanks to Active Sue for helping us out, for really putting in the effort to uh, give us the support, and it's been fantastic. And just big thanks to everybody involved, volunteers especially, giving their own time, and then the runners and the walkers. Thanks, appreciate it. Hi, it's Jody Cowan here from Functionally Fit. Let's talk about pushing strength and some of the progressions that we can use when we're training with just our body weight. Okay, so for the push-up, there's a couple of key performance points of performance that we want to make sure that we've got. When we start out, we want our hands to be just below our shoulders. We can, as a variation, go narrower or wider, but I want you guys to start out with your hands right below your shoulders. Then you're gonna pull the shoulders down, make sure that your neck is as long as possible. Don't let your shoulders start to creep up. Keep everything nice and tight. And then squeeze your glutes and engage your core. We wanna make sure that we don't end up bananaing through the back or getting that lumbar curve. So keep everything nice and tight. Then you lower by pulling the elbows back, chest forward, and press back up. So this is our easiest modification of the push-up. You can change, you can make it a little bit easier by just going to a higher angle or you can make it a little bit harder by going a little bit lower down. Once you guys have gotten strong enough at the box variation, we can move on to our push-up on the ground. So a couple of things that we want to really make sure is that our hands are staying right below the shoulders to start and as you come down, you want to make sure that the elbows stay over top of the wrist so that you're not ever coming down this way. Okay, so come forward, elbow stay above the wrist, and then slide forward. Keeping the core tight and the glutes engaged all the way through the movement. Okay, so as we progress through the push-up, basically all we're doing is changing our angle so we can move into a decline push-up and start to use the box again. So when we set up, we want to again have our hands right below our shoulders, bring your feet up above you, keep your butt tight, keep your core engaged, and then we're just gonna slowly lower, keeping our elbows above the wrist. And then 
that's it. You can go as high as you want. You'll end up in a handstand push-up. So with all of our progressions, the biggest thing to keep in mind is when is the next step come along. So a good rule of thumb is if you can't do any of the reps, obviously that's your next goal. Once you can do one, you can start practicing that, but don't put a lot of intensity into it. At about five reps, I recommend maybe adding in some variations and changing things up a bit. And once you've gotten to 10 reps at any given movement, you can use that to train your cardiovascular strength as well. So putting it into your metabolic conditioning. Have fun guys, enjoy body weight training. This is what you've got for the rest of your life, so make the most of it. Hey everybody, it's Jamie again. I'm back this time to talk to you guys about how you can avoid getting your afternoon slump. So a lot of us start the day, we're really busy, we might have kids to get ready, we might wake up late. We usually grab a coffee, maybe a muffin or a bowl of cereal or something that may not necessarily be the best breakfast for ourselves. So instead of doing this, you can still grab your cup of coffee. I know some people are unwilling to quit coffee, so you can keep it but we're gonna add some stuff to it to make it a little bit better for you and work better for you. So that would be adding, um, making it a bulletproof coffee. So you're adding some butter, some collagen, and some XCT oil. This is protein and fat that will help keep your blood sugar levels stable to help avoid that afternoon crash. So after your coffee, you can incorporate some greens as well. So good green foods, you can mix in some water, you can make a smoothie out of it, you can put it in some almond milk if that's easy for you, but just giving your body the real nutrients it needs to get real energy instead of surviving on blood sugar spikes. So what's happening with these blood sugar spikes in our body is it's causing the adrenaline rush, it's causing our adrenals to say, hey, fight or flight, right? Like we need to hurry, we need to go, we're not digesting properly, our brain is in full mode, we're breathing heavy, our blood is pumping through our body. This also causes our cortisol levels to rise. Cortisol is the hormone in our body that says, okay, we're in panic mode, we've been in panic mode for a long time and we're gonna stay here, so we need to store some energy and it, of course, stores energy around our belly. So we're getting belly fat, we're getting fat around our organs, and we're getting higher cholesterol levels. So we need to avoid this from the get-go by offering our body real nutrients to use as energy instead of just the caffeine and the sugar. So when you do get to your afternoon slump, you can have some greens again if that works for you. Otherwise, resort to a healthy snack instead of reaching for the coffee or the donut again. So for example, my favorite is some trail mix. So having your good nuts and seeds, once again, good proteins, good fats. You're getting a little bit of sugar in there with some, um, some dried fruit or my favorite, some dark chocolate. A couple squares of dark chocolate is not going to hurt you as long as it's a nice high quality one. And the other thing you can do to help nourish yourself is a supplement that you want to use to help nourish your adrenals to make sure that you're not overstressing them all the time and causing a chain reaction in your body with other hormones and other um, organs. So using an adrenal tonic can help to reboot your adrenals. It can help your body deal with stress better and manage it better more long term. So just making a couple small switches in your day, making sure that your body isn't running off of sugar all the time or your adrenaline rush can make a huge difference in the way you feel every day and in your long-term health as well. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Do you have any last maybe words of encouragement for our viewers today? For sure. When you're starting out something new, just remember that progress is not always completely uphill. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be struggles. You're going to fall at times, but we learn the most from our failures. We do. You know, when you watch a baby start walking, yeah. they <laughs> fall more than they're up, but they get up. Yeah, and that's the biggest it. thing is that you just got to get up and you keep yeah. trying. Yeah. And if you commit to being there, you'll get there. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to get involved. Follow us on Twitter or on Facebook at SHOTTBSSM. Tweet us your story ideas, we'd love to hear them. I'm Zoe Sanguinetti, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.